Welcome everybody to the beautiful Buena Vista, Colorado. This little town is nestled in the heart of 14er country. We've got a awesome vantage point here where we can see a ton of mountains. We got blue skies and we got great weather finally. So tonight we're gonna get some gorgeous shots together. So guys, apparently a spring has sprung, at least down here in Buena Vista. I left Breckenridge and it still felt like winter up there. I am way overdressed because it is like 60 degrees out, but I'm so happy to say that. If you remember my other videos where I was shivering and freezing all night long, this is going to be lovely. So from this vantage point above Buena Vista, we can see a whole bunch of 14ers. Up to the north, we have Mount Harvard, Mount Columbia, then Mount Yale, Mount Princeton just to the south. So we got a lot of the collegiate peaks visible. And then south of Mount Princeton, we have Mount Ontario, Chabano, and Tabawatch Mountains, all visible from this vantage point. Now, my main goal for tonight is going to be focusing on Mount Yale and Mount Columbia. Both of these mountains are really, really pretty, but they have very rolling foothills. So if you get too close to them without getting really high in elevation on an adjacent mountain, you can't actually see the peak of it. So imagine the peak is here and you have a bit of a foothill here. If you get too close, your line of sight to that peak is blocked by those false summits. So we can't get very close to these mountains, means we get to get our long lenses out. I drove up a hill way across the valley from these mountains on the other side of town, and I brought with my Canon 200 millimeter F2.8 prime, and I also have my Olympus 300 millimeter F4, which on that OM-1, acts like a 600 millimeter. So we are getting some deep space shots tonight. So I'm not sure what lens I'm gonna use yet, which system I'm gonna be rolling with. I really need to do some test shots and see what focal length these mountains look best at. All right, I got those test shots done and I'm really excited for tonight. This looks gorgeous at 200 millimeters, which is a really nice focal length for the Orion Nebula, but also like Orion's Bell, a little bit of Bernard's Loop will be in there. So that should look really cool setting over one of these mountains. I'm not as in love with the 600 millimeter photos. It's just really tight. Mount Yale looks okay at 600 millimeters. So I did bring three trackers with me tonight. I brought the Mushu Move, the Nomad, and my Skywatcher. It might be a good opportunity for me to run two different trackers at once and have my 600 millimeter on my Skywatcher Star Adventurer and test out that Nomad at 200 millimeters and see how it does. I might get two different uh, focal lengths and two different mountains tonight. Well, now I've got some time to kill. I'm gonna head down into town, probably fly the drone around a little bit more and see what we find. Well, it is officially winter again before I'm able to really look at this footage and update you guys on how it's going. But the images from that night turned out great and just looking at this stuff again has gotten me so excited for this upcoming Milky Way season. A little bit of an update on the 14ers project. We have 22 of a total of 58 mountains photographed. It's a good start. Definitely not as good as I was hoping, but ran into the issue of just having so much work going on in such a busy summer that unfortunately I kind of fell behind, but good plans are coming up for next year. All right, now let's look at the photos from that adventure you were just watching. So this first image is the Pleiades sitting over Mount Columbia, and it might look like it's too good to be true, like I just photoshopped it in there, and while yeah, I did use Photoshop to blend the sky image with the foreground, it is totally authentic as far as the alignment. The Pleiades did set perfectly right over this peak. So I'm pretty happy with how these turned out. I do wish I had a little bit better detail in the gases and stuff from the Pleiades, but I think it looks pretty nice and pretty natural too. And the way the mountain came out with the texture from the snow, I really love shooting these mountains when there's snow on them. Yeah, super excited about that one. So if anyone's interested in a print of this image or the next one I'm about to show you guys, they are uploaded to my darkroom.com 
print fulfillment site and the links are down below for that one. And I actually just got an order for an eight by 10 of an A Basin shot right before I started recording this video. So thank you guys so much for supporting this work through purchasing those prints. It means a ton to me. All right, let's go on to our next photo. And this one I shot on the 200 millimeter on that Canon RP. And it is of Orion Nebula and Orion's belt and like the flame and horse head nebula and the running man nebula all sitting nicely right over Mount Yale. And I love this orientation too. I love how we can see the town, the, the lights from the neighborhood down below the mountain. And again, it's a very authentic alignment. I use the same lens, same camera, same orientation, and the Orion Nebula did sit perfectly right over this mountain. And right at the end of this video, I'm going to be playing a time lapse that shows exactly how the stars fell over the mountain. So if you're curious about how they aligned, stay tuned for that, but it'll be right at the end of the video. Now, this image, this file has given me some hassle. The one you're looking at right now is the edit I did back in April and I never really loved how it turned out. There's parts of it that I really like, but parts of it that I don't. I like how well the flame nebula and the horse head nebula are showing up. I like parts of the details in the Orion nebula, but I don't like how blown out the core is and just there's, to me it feels over processed. So, just a few days ago, I re-edited this photo and this is the result. I like this edit better, but it's funny when I put it on Instagram and put it on uh, YouTube and did like a poll, I was getting super mixed results. Some people like the darker sky in the original photo. They like how much of that H-alpha gas is showing up. And I understand that that looks pretty cool, but to me, it looks overprocessed, a little bit overcooked. I prefer the edit I did just a few days ago. Now, it doesn't show as much of the gassy details or the H-alpha color, especially in the flame nebula, but to me, it feels more authentic. And I was also able to bring out some more of that green air glow that is a natural part of the sky, but I've also gotten comments that people didn't like the green. They thought that that looked unnatural. So I don't know. I, again, I'm always begging for comments, but I will beg for your comments on this one. Do you prefer my original edit that I did in April or this edit that I just did in December of 2023? Um, yeah, it's interesting. I'm not sure which one exactly is going to end up in the book, but I guess we will have to decide that when the time comes. So those are my two images, and thank you guys so much for following along, watching this adventure. Hopefully we have a lot of clear nights and pretty stars and big old mountains to come. But one thing before I go, before you click off, don't, don't click off just yet. I never thought I would be in the position to say this, but for my YouTube channel, we actually have merch. I collaborated with a local artist, Erica Donahue, who We've actually gotten her commission to do a lot of different pieces of art for us personally. We've made them as gifts. And I, when I was able to actually do some proper branding for this 14ers project, she was the first artist I went to. She is brilliant, really easy to work with. And I can't say enough good things about the art that she has created for us. So I took a few of the pieces that she made for my YouTube channel, for my Instagram, and made this shirt and this phone case set up out of the artwork that she created. So these are right now for sale through Cotton Bureau. And there's links down below where you can find those. And it's a way that, again, through print purchases and maybe selling a few t-shirts and few phone cases, we can support this 14ers project because hopefully I'm not doing nearly as much of this stonework, this fireplace I built for my house. I'm really proud of, but hopefully I'm not doing too much of this stonework next year, but we are still going to need to finance the logistics of this project. So if you'd like to support it, please go ahead and pick up one of these shirts. It would mean a ton to me. And as always, the prints are available. On top of that, I have a buy me a coffee account and I am going to be doing some more uh, exclusive content, probably more of the along the editing side of things. So if you want to see some exclusive videos, please go support me on Buy Me A Coffee. And if anyone is looking to learn some more about astrophotography, what gear I use, how I process, what you need to do to get the images that you're hoping for. I'm running those one-on-one -on -one Zoom workshops. I've had a lot of fun talking with people from literally all over the world and it has been really enjoyable to see what you guys create and how we can learn from each other. Now hopefully the next video you see from me is going to be about the Nomad Tracker. I'm finally getting the full production model and I'm going to be making several a series of videos on how to use it 
how it compares to the move shoot move which one you should buy what are the buying best packages to get when you're getting the nomad so those are going to be coming out soon and of course we'll be doing more 14ers as soon as the weather allows all right thank you guys so much please like comment subscribe goodbye goodbye goodbye